In this episode, we'll take a look at the Triton Audio Fethead Phantom. Now, first of all, what is the Fethead Phantom? This is a problem solver. It gives your microphone a bit of a boost before it gets to your recorder or camera. For those of us that are filmmakers, it can help in a couple of situations. Number one, if you have a camera with XLR inputs and the XLR inputs don't provide a lot of gain or amplification and or your microphone doesn't provide a very strong output signal, this can help in that situation to get a cleaner recording that sounds better. It can also work in a similar situation if your audio recorder doesn't provide a lot of gain or amplification and or your microphone doesn't have a very strong output signal. For example, a relatively low priced microphone and a consumer grade recorder like the Zoom H4n. So what does it do? Well, what it does is it adds 18 decibels of gain to the audio coming out of your microphone before it gets to the recorder or camera. Plain and simply, this makes your audio louder. The way it does this is it takes phantom power from your camera or recorder, which is normally there to power a microphone. It takes that power and it does its amplification, the 18 decibels, and then it also passes that power on to your microphone, which also needs the power. This is designed for condenser microphones, which require 48 volts of phantom power. That's gonna be shotgun microphones and most boom microphones. You might ask yourself, well, why do I need more gain? Why do I need more amplification? Well, if your recorder doesn't provide a whole lot of amplification or gain or input level or whatever you want to call it, then what happens is for a lot of consumer grade microphones, you may have to turn that input level really close to the max or all the way to the max. When you do that, generally what happens is that you're going to get a little bit more self noise or hiss in your recording, and that doesn't sound great. What the Fethead Phantom does is it provides additional amplification so you don't have to push your camera or recorder's preamplifier quite so hard. And as a result, you get cleaner recordings with less of that self noise or hiss. Here's a sample with the Deity S Mic 2, boom, just out of the frame, directly into the Ursa Mini Pro, no Fethead Phantom, input level set to 85 to get our peak somewhere in the minus 18 range. In this sample, we have the S Mic 2 from Deity, boom, just out of the frame here, running into the Ursa Mini Pro with the Fethead Phantom, and the input level is set to 62 out of 100. So in this... To illustrate this, I did some recordings in my basement studio here. I have, just to tell you about the whole process I used, I have sound blankets on two sides, left and right, plus one behind the camera. I also have a velveteen style backdrop behind me. So in terms of overall noise of the environment, this is actually quite quiet. There's not a lot going on. There's nobody else at home. There's nothing running that would make noise. So first of all, recorded in a very quiet environment. Second of all, what I did is I ran my microphone directly into my Ursa Mini Pro or my Zoom H4n. And then I also did the same thing, exact same type of recording, except the second time I used the FET head between the microphone and the camera or recorder. Then I compared the silent section of the recording after I loudness normalized both recordings, both with and without the FET head phantom to minus 23 LUFS. That's a European broadcast standard for loudness. Once I did that, I compared the loudness of the silent sections to see what differences we saw in the noise floor. This is a practical noise floor. What I found, for example, with the S Mic 2 from Deity, which is a new microphone I reviewed last week, into my Ursa Mini Pro directly, and then also recorded with the Fethead Phantom, I saw a reduction in the noise floor of about two decibels. Now you might be thinking to yourself, that's not a whole lot. Well, it isn't a whole lot, but it is enough to potentially make a difference in post. So it could be the difference between having to do noise reduction in post and not having to do it. And saving time in post is always a good idea. The whole saying, we'll fix it in post, is oftentimes not possible. And number two, if it is possible, it comes with some costs, both in terms of audio quality and in terms of actual costs. It often costs literally more to fix things in post than it does to just get it right in production when you're recording. So a couple other scenarios. I had already mentioned the Deity S Mic 2 and the Ursa Mini Pro being two decibels quieter. Also the Rode NTG4 Plus, a very common shotgun microphone, and the Zoom H4n, I found a difference of five decibels. So it was five decibels quieter using the Fethead Phantom than not using it with that combination. Now Triton Audio also makes an original Fethead, just called Fethead, as opposed to Fethead Phantom, which is what we're talking about here. And I have a little secret for you, but before I tell you that secret, I need to make a disclaimer. Number one, all the things I tell you about here next, do not try this with a ribbon microphone or any other microphone which cannot tolerate phantom power. If you're not sure, check the documentation for your microphone. Do not just try this. 
Now, all that being said, most dynamic microphones like Shure SM58 or Shure SM57 or other interview handheld types of microphones that we use in video and film production are dynamic microphones, and they don't generally mind if they are given phantom power. They don't do anything with it, they just ignore it. So that means that the Fethead Phantom can actually also work with those dynamic microphones. It'll pass the phantom power through in one test that we did with the Zoom H4n and the Shure SM57 microphone, which is a dynamic microphone. We found a difference of over three decibels quieter using the Fethead Phantom. So you can also potentially use this with dynamic microphones as long as they can tolerate taking phantom power. Now, a few notes. Number one, which Fet head should you get if you're considering getting one? If you're going to be using mostly dynamic microphones, you should just get the original one, which is just called the Fet head. If you'll mainly be using condenser microphones like shotgun microphones and other boom microphones, and doing that into a camera or audio recorder, you'll probably want to go with the Fet head Phantom. One note that I found in my testing and confirmed with Triton Audio is that the Rode NTG2, which is one of my favorite kind of budget shotgun microphones, does not work with the Fethead Phantom. And the reason for that is that it's just the way that the NTG2 was designed to work. It doesn't do well with this combination. However, what you can do is use the original Fethead, the one that doesn't deliver phantom power, and use the battery in the NTG2, and evidently that works. Just didn't want you to go out there and buy this if that's the microphone that you're using. Now you might be skeptical and thinking, well, everything comes with a cost. What's the hidden cost here? Well, there is one potential cost. However, it's very easy to address. That is that the Fethead Phantom changes the load impedance on your overall audio chain. Basically what that means is that you can't do long cable runs after the Fethead Phantom. Otherwise you could potentially run into situations where the signal degrades by the time it gets to your camera or recorder. However, what I do is I plug the Fethead Phantom directly into the camera or recorder and then the cable from there up to the microphone. That way you avoid that issue, I believe. I didn't run into any issues using 25 and 50 foot cables when I hooked it up that way, so I just wanted you to be aware of that. And then of course, in terms of pricing, it comes in at $100 US. I have US and European links down below if you're interested. Overall, my summary is that this is a really good problem solving piece of gear to have in your kit if you're doing audio or video production. Hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. If you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that and we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. And if you'd like to be notified each time a new video comes out, go ahead and click that bell icon. Talk to you soon.